Right, so today we're going to have a look at uh, Marlin. Um, I've got an i3 style printer. Um, this should help people with i3 style printers, I, I hope anyway. Um, so, where do you start? I mean, first thing you need is VS Code, which is this. And then, once it's on there, you need to get platform IO um, this thing here gets installed with platform IO so to get this one you'd have this here and you'd, you'd click on there let's look for another extension for example right so if we wanted to install it we, we typed in there platform IO and then click install and it installs you get the idea anyway so when the platform IO installs you want to check this lower left area and this area here. See if it's doing anything then don't don't attempt to uh, compile anything because it's just not going to work. As soon, soon as it's on there you want to close down uh, VS Code and then uh, reopen it. Wait till platform IO is loaded up properly and uh, that that's what you need so then you're gonna need to download Marlin firmware if you want a head start I would suggest downloading the configurations so you, the files I would suggest to use would be in here um, I think it's config yeah config examples a net a8 because a lot of uh, i3 style pin printers are basically based on the A8, so these these are the files you'd need. So basically, um, if you go back to configurations, what you do is click on here, and then you would download zip, and then extract the files. You only need the two files. Um, you only need the two files in the right place which is a net a8 this file and this file that that's the two files you need they should have examples of you know it should give you a basic start and uh, what you want to do is you need to replace the files in your marlin folder so let me just go back a minute to Marlin. So Marlin, you'd want to download this one, which is the latest release. You download that, unzip it, and then you you want to put it in C drive. So I've got in C drive here, and then basically this is the latest one, 2.0.72. And then if you go into the Marlin folder, you've got these two files here which are the same files as um, the ones in here that I showed you. They're not exactly the same files. Obviously, these files here have been um, altered. But um, what I'd suggest to do is extract two, vo two, two of these. Let's go back, Marlin, two of these. So extract one to your C drive, extract one somewhere else, and the one you've got somewhere else, rename it so that you can put them both here. Because you're going to need uh, Marlin setup which is untouched, and you're also going to need one that either you're going to put those two files in here, you're going to put them in to, uh, to do that, or you start from scratch. I would suggest starting from scratch because you should learn this stuff anyway. But let's assume that you've got Marlin untouched. So say you extracted two, you got one here which you want to work with and another one which will say Marlin 2.0 untouched, for example. Say, say for example, you just done that. You would go into here, you need to add in folders. I've already done it, but just to show you, file, and then you choose add folder to workspace, then you find your folder and click add. I've already added it. So let's assume that 
I put Marlin on here untouched, the first thing you do before you start making your own or using any pre-made files is you want to come in here, configuration H, press the tick button here which will compile it. This this will compile Marlin as as it is without being touched. If everything goes okay you'll have a message and it'll say success at the end. I'm not going to do it here because this version of Marlin on my PC doesn't work but I not Marlin sorry VS Code and Platform IO I'll just show you I've got some problems with it. See failed but I've got a working copy on my laptop which I use to create Marlin and uh, work with it. I really don't know why it's not working on here. I've I've tried loads of things. I've tried reinstalling it, everything, but let's just ignore that for now. So this now going back to the working copy, imagine I've just gone onto a folder which is the one I'm gonna work with. So you first you go into here um you can name you can name here what you want to call it like um i don't know skr 1.4 turbo marlin or put your name there and a the date so you know when you did it or something that's all that's for um i'm not sure if this is enabled default but you obviously want to define show boot screen this one is normally set to um, zero, but if you're doing it for an SKR board, like SKR 1.4, 1.4 Turbo, what you'd want to do here is to minus one. So that's because there's a virtual port on the board, so if you ever write Marlin to directly to the board, rather than use the SD card then then that will make it work but I would advise just compiling the um, when once you finish compiling it and making sure it's alright um, upload it to an SD card put the SD card in in your printer and then it'll automatically load it, it, it it's just less hassle you got your board right usually this is correct for your, for your board type, um, you can find the boards in, I believe, SCR folder, uh, core, then boards.h, and then you can scroll down the list. Let me see if I can find mine. I'm not sure how far I need to go down. Actually, it's probably a quicker way of doing this. Um, right, I'll tell you what. Control F. Let's put turbo in here. If I can spell it right, turbo. Okay, so this is what I would use. SKR 1.4 turbo. If you got a standard 1.4 board, then it's the same, but up to I think just the four, and the rest you leave off. So let's just put it on there anyway. So you know it's there so that's uh, defined your board what you might want to do as well is go into the platform mini file change this to the processor which you're going to be using which is um, let me think now if I go into platform IO it's in here somewhere LPC 1769 is the turbo processor or the non-turbo is LPC 1768 so let's put in here LPC 1769 so that, so that platform IO knows that we're doing it for this board okay so you can save that with control S you can see the dot there will disappear now that means it's saved same for this one, control S. Going further down, define extruders 1, your filament diameter, defaults 175. 
um, this is whether you've got a single nozzle we'll just say we have which I have um, this stuff I don't think we need uh, parking feature for your nozzle if you've got that I don't have it um, tool head switching I don't have any of that either PSU control if you've got some sort of setup where you could control the um, power supply you can use that thermal settings this this piece here is for your um, thermistor the one I've got is this one Mendel parts thermistor 4.7 that's both on my extruder and my bed so when I come down here this one's for the extruder so I'd set that one to 3 and then the one for the bed 3 as well right further down um, you've got minimum temperature for your bed and your, yeah, your heat on your bed you can leave that alone this one as well you can leave that alone unless you want to set the maximum it's up to you right uh, here is your PID settings you don't want to touch these yet you um, this one's for the hot end you want to do your PID on um, I'd say use pronto face basically uh, look up pronto face and how to do your PID and get your PID values I mean first of all you need to write your firmware so you'll have to do, go through all this first and then when you've wrote your firmware you can either save it in pronto face with the M500 code or you can come back in here put the values in manually and re-upload the firmware to the SD card I prefer to do it that way so that I know it's on there and then I keep a separate copy of my configuration.h and configuration advanced.h files separately so that if I ever come back to this and I forgot what I've done at least I've got a copy of what I did before um, PID heat bed heating uh, this one do divide yeah you got to turn this one on because if you don't uncomment that when you're trying to do the PID um, command in front of face for the bed it'll error out so you, you need to uncomment that so it's available and obviously this is if enabled PID temp there's your default values again like I said with the uh, with this one I would come back in put your numbers in and then re upload your firmware it I think it's good practice to do that right um, prevent cold extrusion yeah we want that so a minimum temperature for your extruder like um, I, th I think if you want to check your extruders extruding within the menus on your printer you'd obviously want to set this to a decent value so it'll extrude it won't extrude anything until the temperature is at least 170 you can set that to whatever you want max extrude length is 200 I think that's millimeters you can set that to whatever you want um, that that um, I think that's only for I don't think that's to do with like when you print in but what whatever the case I I just leave it default anyway uh, thermal runaway protection is enabled as default don't touch that leave it alone um, this one um, these are the settings for your um, Oh, what they call now end stops that's it so there for your end stops um, you can tell them to use the X max if you want instead of the X min that's up to you I'm leaving this as default but um, we are gonna I am gonna go into senseless homing later but you can still leave these here you I mean for me I've still got the end stops on my printer because I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue with senseless home and I would like to but I've left this here so that I can go back to it if I need to I can just turn off the senseless home and um, yeah. 
Enable pull up for all end stops to prevent flood to stay. Right, I'm not. I can't remember what that is, but I don't think you need to adjust any of this to be. Right, so define X stop inverting. This is to do with um, making sure your end stops are um, the correct, correct way round. So if you leave them as false, the the best thing to do is. What I would say is home uh, the axis and then um, press in the end stop. And if it stops home in, then obviously it's the right way. If it doesn't stop and it carries on and crashes, then you need to change this. So you change it from false to true. Uh, step drivers, I need, I would define these. XYZ and E0 for me it's um, TMC 2209 uh, this would be UART mode as standard I think you put something else after it yes it's, I think you put standalone if you uh, if you want the um, the other modes they do so um, Let's paste all these in here, and this one as well, so all minor TMC 2209. So if you had an extra extruder you'd obviously uncomment that one and add the step drive in there. Right, um, we don't need any of this really. Um, right, default default steps per unit I set mine to 100 you can use a Prusa calculator as um, as a calculate on the Prusa website for um, for um, calculating what these these should be for your um, X and Y but the this is standard NEMA 17 the, the usual ones you see with the i3 printers so you need about 100 uh, my extruder is a BMG style all metal with a 3 to 1 gear and the magic number for me is a 420 so that's what I put there these are the default max feed rate you can leave them uh, these ones as well leave them because all this is kind of defined when you when you in your slicer when you when you do your you know you know what I mean anyway you don't need to touch them um, none of this either right so as jerk um, there is classic jerk which is the stand where you can use your jerk settings you can enable that one if you want but uh, is this other one junction deviation um, so if classic jerk is disabled which it is then they use junction deviation um, from what I've seen on other people on YouTube this just leave it at this you, you can change it to classic jerk if you want but they just say leave it at this so that's what I said Right, so define Z probe uses Z min end stop pin. Yeah, that's defined. I am actually using a um, a Z Z end stop um, for my bed leveling. I, I I don't like sensors, so I leave that as it is. Um, you can you can do your probe settings here I mean it depends what probe you got you know I'm not gonna go into that um, so you can set all that up here and there's and there's stuff here um, yeah senseless probing you you can do but don't confuse that with senseless homing because that's a different thing I think senseless homing is further down or is it? Let me have a look. Right, number we are nine oh eight. How many? Right, 
senseless. Let's just try senseless then. Right, okay. Oh, actually, I think senseless homing might be on configuration.h. That's probably why it's not finding it here. Let's go quickly to there and just see if it is there. Senseless. Yeah, senseless homing is in configuration.h, so we won't go into that just now. Okay, so uh, this is to do with the offsets where your probe is in relation to the nozzle. You can set all that up here. Um, there's more settings for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, more settings again. Right, okay, so... Um, direction of end stop when home in one is max, minus one is min, so minus one. Usually on an i3 printer what that means is the x homes to the left and the y homes to the back of the printer and the z obviously homes to the bed level. Uh, bed size here, I mean for me is 250 by 250 because mine's not a standard one. Um, this you don't need to touch any of these I don't think and this one is for me 270 because that is the height um, more end stop settings if you need them I don't need them filament run out sensor you can set that up here as well bed leveling you can use auto bed leveling three points auto bed leveling linear auto bed bilinear UBL and you can do mesh bed leveling for me it's mesh bed leveling so I define that here you define other ones probably auto bed three point is is the usual one uh, three three point uh, equates to nine total so three in the front three across the middle of the bed and three at the back so nine points um, you set up the uh, different parameters here um, mesh bed leveling is the settings are here yeah mesh bed leveling and Uh, you can set uh, Z safe homing is see somewhere. I'm sure it was Z safe homing. I believe ah oh, there it is. Define Z safe homing. Um, so you can uncomment that out if you need that. Um, you can define where the Z homes either the centre of the bed here which you can change this if you want to change it to a certain position you just take out the I believe you just take out the centre and this and you put a number in brackets like so but I'm not going to do that um, I don't use any of this bed skew that's not anything I need to touch additional features um, define any prom settings you want this on because um, you can store settings with um, you can use these settings basically 500, 501, 502 which you probably need in uh, front face if you can use that afterwards um, preheat you can set this to whatever you want I usually set mine to 195 for PLA and 60 for uh, the bed I don't use 
ABS, so I just leave that as is. Um, define nozzle pack feature if you've got nozzle pack feature. Um, nozzle cleaning if you've got that feature on your printer. Um, let's go down a bit more. LCDs, LCD. Okay, define language English, that's default, so you want that. I know this says Japanese, but that is right. Uh, divine LCD stand, no, we don't need that one. I've got the 12864 LCD, so um, I have the SD card on it, so I define SD card. Don't need to mess about with the speed, so we can leave that alone. Encoder settings, if you're um, your dial on your screen is going the wrong way or, or you need to adjust the settings then you do it here mine are um, mine is 4 here and usually I add an extra line in here I don't know what it is now but it's milliseconds timing I usually add 128 milliseconds because I've got a slight glitch on my screen and I need to define uh, the settings here. I don't have it with me, but it's not important. You're probably not going to be using. Most people are going to go for the touch screen. I, I, it just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, reverse encoder direction. So if if you encoder, if if the dial's going the wrong way, you can uncomment this out so it goes the other way. Um, and this fine speak if you have a speaker then that can produce tones you enable it here but if you got like the typical buzzer you don't don't bother with that um there's all sort of diff sorts of dis different lcds here that's not exactly the right one i'm using but it's further down if i remember yeah, as you can see, there's loads of different ones. Um, this is mine. Reprap disk and full graphics smart controller. So I would enable that one. Obviously, you'd enable the one you've got. Um, yeah, more about screens, OLED displays. Yeah, this is more settings that graphical TFTs are the controllers. Um, touch screen. Extra features. I don't think there's anything in here that we use. Yeah, and that's that. So let's just go and save that. Configuration advanced H. This is where we need to set up some more stuff let's go back to the start this is where you set up your senseless homing and things as well uh, okay so let's have a look we don't need any of that okay we don't need any of this or this And bear with me, I'll uh, get to it. Hot ends. Um, there is something in here somewhere. I may have passed it about um, the temperature, the heat up temperature, and the time it takes to do like two degrees. If you're having like uh, errors, like your um, bed doesn't. Uh, warm up quick enough in two degrees you can alter how long it uh, takes I think the default is something like 30 seconds for um, doing two degrees or something like that we can change it to like 90 or something um, let me see dual carriage 
Cards. Okay, home and senseless homing is here somewhere. Right, so this is this is where we need to be, so let's go back up a minute. Let's do a control F, it's gonna be easy, senseless. Go down like two. Right, okay. This is the one we want to find senseless homing. And right, stall sensitivity. You don't set this up yet, you just leave it as it is. You set this up in pronto face because you've got a number between zero and two hundred and fifty six and you've got to put a number in and then home the axes you're working on and then do it until you're able to home and it stops and it doesn't make any grinding noises. Best thing to do is start in the middle which half of 255 is about 126. So if you start at 126 if that's working then fine. Then don't you, you don't stop there. If it works there you you've got to find the area where it stops working and where it begins working because if you set it up and you just choose a number like a high number and um, you think right that's working so I'll save that but what might happen is if if something binds slightly for some reason like on your axes or whatever slight bind that can stop your print so you need to find that magic sweet spot so say for example um, you found you found it was 110 on the X for example and then you went to 105 on the X and then it was making noises so then when you went to 110 it was fine so that that's that that'd be where your sweet spot is obviously you do it on the X and the Y you don't do it on the Z obviously um, so yeah senseless homing is uncommented um, uh, right, define TMC debug. So if you got the 2209 drivers, well, I think this will work with other TMCs as well. But I've got the 2209. You want this defined so that you can get information from it if there's any issues. Um, let me go down. We don't need any of this. Right. I think this is CNC stuff. I'm not sure if there's anything else left in here, but I'm trying to go down slowly just to uh, see if I've missed anything. Yeah, filament width sensor, if you've got that. Um, let's go down. I'm not sure if there's anything else here. We're coming to the end now, so I think that's it. I think. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, oh, you can use a joystick to control your print if you want. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much it, really. So, if you get to this stage, obviously you'd save it configuration.h this is not going to work obviously because like I said in the beginning this doesn't work I've got a version on my laptop which does work but you do compile and obviously you'd hope to get to the end and it has it says success basically if it says success then you've done it right if not you've got to fix the errors um, I'm pretty sure my errors are to do with the programs itself or platform IO either the extension or VS Code itself, I haven't figured it out yet, but that's what these errors are, they aren't errors to do with um, what I've altered, you know, so um, so yeah, I hope that gives you a good idea on how to deal with this, 
and um, get yourself set up on like an i3 style uh, style uh, printer.